Hey guys, I'm Dina from simplyhomecook.com and today I'll be showing you how to make a braided cream cheese danish. Now I know it looks a little fancy, but it's actually really easy to make and this is coming from someone who sucks at doing braids. But really though, it's extremely easy to make and it comes together really quickly. So let's get started. So the first thing you wanna make is the cream cheese filling. So in a large bowl, add eight ounces of softened cream cheese, a quarter cup of granulated sugar, one large egg yolk, a quarter teaspoon of vanilla extract, and then fresh lemon zest. So about, um, about one lemon. Um, just keep in mind when you're zesting it, um, only get the yellow part. Once you kind of go too far and hit the white part, that stuff is really bitter and it's not gonna taste good. So stick to the yellow part. All right, now that you have all of your filling ingredients in the bowl, you can get your electric hand mixer and beat everything on high speed until it's nice, smooth, and creamy. All right, that already smells so good. Mmm, that lemony flavor, it's delicious. All right, let's set this aside and let's get started on the puff pastry. We're gonna need to lightly flour our surface first. Let's do that. Now lay your puff pastry on top of your floured surface. And then you wanna grab your rolling pin and begin rolling it out about two inches out. So you want so it's a, it's a square that's about nine by nine inches. You want it to be like 11 by nine inches. So roll it out two inches lengthwise. All right, here comes the fun part. So you're gonna grab your scissors or kitchen shears, and then you're gonna just cut off the top corners. So we'll go for the first one and then the second one. Oh, and these corners, don't toss them. Bake them along with the Danish when it goes into the oven and you could just munch on them, or I like to dip them in Nutella because everything with Nutella is just better. <laughs> or you could just eat them as is or dip them in like jam or whipped cream, however you want it, don't toss them, that's good stuff. Okay, now if you look at your puff pastry, you're gonna see that it's kind of split in thirds. So along the both the left and right side, you wanna cut about nine to 10 slits. Um, I like to actually like kind of make little indents in the dough just so I can have something to follow because I've tried just kind of snipping it and it ends up really uneven so kind of create a guide for yourself. So go ahead and start cutting nine even strips on each side and you want to make sure not to go too far into the middle of it because that's where the filling is going to go and if the strips are too deep then the filling is just going to ooze out while it's baking. And you don't want to do that. Right now that you have all of your strips cut out you want to cut off those bottom corners so just go in with your scissors and snip those right off. And if you end up with a flap at the bottom, like the middle third that's a little too long, no big deal, you could just cut it off and you can bake that along with those other scraps. All right, now you wanna split the filling between the two um, puff pastry sheets and just plop it all in the center of the Danish. Okay, now smooth it all out and try to keep it in the center just because if you start getting it all, all over the strips, it's gonna ooze out while it bakes. Mm -mm. It smells so good. That's so yummy. Mm, that lemony flavor. I cannot wait to bake this and dig in. All right, so now the braiding part. So you wanna take the top and fold it over onto the cream cheese filling. Then you wanna take one, one strip and cross it over to the opposite side and do the same to the other side. And then just kind of, um, when you, sometimes if the strips aren't long enough, you can actually just kind of pull them and then you wanna pinch them down with your finger and just keep doing that from the left and right side. And once you get down to the bottom, if that um, middle third ends up being a little too long, you could just slice off a little bit of it and then fold it over and then cross over the last few strips. Right now, you're gonna gently transfer the Danish onto a baking sheet lined with parchment paper. Oh, they almost fell. Okay, so to make your egg gouache, you wanna combine one large egg with two teaspoons of water, then give it a good thorough whisk. Then using a pastry brush, you wanna generously brush it over the top of your Danishes. All right, now you wanna pop these in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 20-ish minutes or until they're nice and golden brown. So while the Danish is baking in the oven, we can get started on that glazed drizzle. Drizzle, glaze, glaze, what? 
In a small bowl, combine half a cup of powdered sugar along with two tablespoons of heavy cream. Then using a spoon or a small spatula, you wanna just give it a good whisk until it's got a nice, smooth, creamy consistency. And depending if you want it a little runnier or thicker, add more heavy cream for runnier consistency and then add more powdered sugar for a thicker consistency. But I like mine like nice and thick like that. Though it's got like a, oops, <laughs> it's got like a solid white glaze on top. It just looks prettier to me. All right, they are done and my house smells so good. I want to drizzle this on now, but we need to let it cool down to at least like room temperature. So that way this doesn't just melt off. So just give it some time and then we're going to drizzle on shortly. All right, the Danish is almost cooled down. We're just, we're just not patient enough. So we're just going to go ahead and glaze it and be generous with this stuff. Mm -mm -mm. My house smells so good right now. I cannot wait to dig in. All right, time to dig in. Mm, that looks so good. Mm. There's like bursts of lemony flavor. It's creamy, it's crunchy, and that glaze, it's so sweet and so delicious. Oh, this is so good. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video, and if you did, and if you're not already subscribed to our channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that bell icon so you guys always get notified when we come out with new recipes. See you next time.